Mahaba, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Doc Is In, where Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi's expert physicians and dedicated caregivers converge to explore the dynamic intersection of technology, compassionate care, and cutting-edge research to help deliver the best patient outcomes. Join us as we delve into transformative advancements shaping the forefront of healthcare, sparking conversations that bridge innovation with patient-centered excellence. From the latest healthcare innovations to new frontiers of surgical procedures and technologies, we'll cover it all. So whether you're a medical professional, science enthusiast, clinician, or just an avid podcast listener looking for, to expand your horizons, this podcast is for you. My name is Derek Keddington, and I'll be your host for today's episode, brought to you by the Fatima bin Mubarak Center here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Remember, before we dive in, hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button as we're here to make The Doc Is In your number one destination for healthcare podcasts. So whether you're about to buckle up for a drive, getting ready for a run, or warm up a cup of coffee, join us now as The Doc Is In. Here with me for today's episode is Dr. Basil Jalad and Dr. Ahmed Mathalka. Dr. Jalad is a consultant here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi working in medical oncology. Dr. Jalad received his medical degree from Jordan University of Science and Technology in Jordan and then com completed his residency at the University of Illinois in Chicago. To complete his training, he completed a fellowship at Henry Ford Hospital and Wayne State University in Michigan, USA, and is triple American board certified in internal medicine, medical oncology, and hematology. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mathalka, is a consultant and a surgical oncologist here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. He completed his medical training, medical school, um, from the Jordan University of Science and Technology, yeah. same as Dr. Jalad, yeah. um, and then completed a surgical oncology fellowship at Hus King Hassan Cancer, Cancer Center in Jordan. Um, so we're really excited to have both of you here with us today um, for, the, for the doc is in. So for today's episode, we're gonna talk about the use of new adjunct chemotherapy. Mm -hmm as it relates specifically to breast cancer. Yes. Because um, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I don't have my pin, but we're glad to see Dr. Jalad and Dr. Mathalka have their <laughs> breast cancer awareness pins. Um, so Dr. Jalad, if you'll start us off by telling us, what is neoadjuvant chemotherapy? So neoadjuvant chemotherapy is a uh, location of uh, giving the therapy uh, before the surgery. So, you know, usually in breast cancer, we treat, uh, there is multiple, uh, you know, involved services uh, to manage the patient accurately or in the best uh, to reach the best outcome. One of them is giving medicines like chemotherapy, surgery or radiation. So new adjuvant chemotherapy is giving the chemotherapy. Uh, we call it chemotherapy, but it could be combined drugs, including chemotherapy prior to surgery okay. in order to achieve an outcome that we need for the surgery and even for you know future understanding how that the disease behaves. Uh, some of the indications are surgical, Ahmad uh, uh, could cover that uh, uh, for that matter, but some of them are also medical reasons. Uh, for, so for some types of uh, cancer, uh, breast cancer, including triple negative breast cancer, HER2 positive breast cancer, we give it to reach a certain outcome that is defined after the surgery. And some of them, as I mentioned, surgical. Right, so what's the, what's the goal though of, of new adjuvant chemotherapy? Why do we give it beforehand? One of the goals is, uh, uh, is surgical. The surgeon is, is, is interested to reach a point that uh, can help him with his uh, surgical options. Uh, and the others are to reach a goal to understand how the disease behaves. I mean, what do you think, Ahmed, for the surgical reasons? Yeah, so basically, thank you. So basically, it will help us to get better outcome regarding our surgery. A lot of patients now interested to have like breast conservative surgery rather than mastectomy. So giving a new adjuvant chemotherapy will help us to change or to reduce the extent of the surgery at time of surgery. Since the chemotherapy will, will decrease the size of the tumor, okay. um, this is also will get us like a chance to preserve the breast or do breast conservat uh, conservative surgery. Uh, it will improve also our outcome. So it decreases the margin to be positive, uh, which means that the involvement of all the edges of the tumor when we do resection. Uh, and the third thing, it will improve also like cosmetic outcome because it will reduce the size of the specimen that we remove during the surgery. This is if we talk about like on the breast, but if we go also on the axilla, even in, in patients who are like, who were like not positive or they have a cancer in the lymph node, now we can do a sentinel lymph node or just sampling 
the, 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 the lymph nodes instead of doing a full node dissection for those patients. So the whole extent of the surgery will be, we are de-escalating the extent of the surgery for those patients. And it's very important for, for most of the patient because also in the arbit, if we don't do a full node dissection, it will decrease our complication or morbidity, which means one of it, lymphedema. It happens usually in 15% of the patient if we do a full node dissection. But if we do just targeted axillary dissection or sentinel lymph node, it will be less than 2%. That's right. So it sounds like there's a, a lot of benefits from mm -hmm. having you in chemotherapy to begin with. Yeah, this, what he mentioned, Ahmed mentioned, does not matter which type of breast cancer we, we have. There is multiple ones, as we call it, uh, ER positives, HER2 positives, or triple negatives. If the surgeon told me I need to reach, you know, a point that I can do a less, you know, a co a more conservative surgery or to remove less lymph nodes or so, we can give the therapy just to reach that point. But some of the indications may, regardless of the surgery that they, that we will end up providing, uh, like the triple negative breast cancer, HER2 positive breast cancer, it is still on a certain size of the disease or stage of the disease, helpful to give that therapy because once we give it and we do the surgery, and when it's we reach a complete response from the surgery, like we do the surgery and we find no evidence of the tumor all melted down, and we can see the tumor buried, but all dead cells, this is a very good outcome that can help us even to de-escalate, we call it de-escalation of the therapy after, after that surgery, uh, you know, and give us maybe uh, we can give a lighter adjuvant therapy, which is the, the, the phase of treatment after the surgery. Um, and so it will even help us to tell the patient long-term outcome of the disease could be more favorable in that matter. That makes sense. Because I know me particularly, and I'm sure some of our listeners, when I hear of chemo, well, I don't really want to go do that. I'd rather just have surgery, right? Um, and I'm sure you come across that with your patients. But it sounds like the benefits of neuroadjuvant chemotherapy for certain cancer types is way outweigh the costs yeah. and the concerns that we Giving have. the drug sometime before or after the surgery, uh, it could improve cure rates. But sometimes, smartly, we do it before the surgery to reach more, uh, you know, perks or benefits uh, and understanding the behavior of the disease that can help us on the long term. Uh, especially in patients, they, they will need chemotherapy anyway. Usually we prefer to start with chemotherapy to get all those benefits that we talked about. And also, not all patients will, will respond for the new adjuvant chemotherapy. So usually the, we keep like examining them during getting the chemotherapy and when they finish almost two thirds or like 75% of the new adjuvant chemotherapy, usually we repeat the images on the breast. Most likely if we did the breast MRI before, we repeat the breast MRI and we assess the response in those cases. But most of the patient will benefit from new adjuvant chemotherapy, like talking about the size wise and downgrading the surgery from mastectomy to lumpectomy, but not necessarily all of them, mm -hmm. not 100%. This is patient. always, uh, the decision that we make it jointly. I mean, we do those multidisciplinary, uh, you know, clinic, you know, approaches, or we, uh, uh, you know, the tumor board, we call the breast cancer tumor board that we meet, you know, every week to go over, you know, cases after reviewing their stage, their type of disease, the images, you know, and we found that the patient would benefit from therapy before the surgery, you know, uh, I mean, the patient will, we know when we go over, we'll understand that this is, you know, for the, you know, best outcomes uh, uh, for, you know, that, that we want to reach with their therapy. So it's an, it's a, it is an individualized decision. Sometimes if we already know that the tumor is so, uh, size is small and, and they may not benefit from chemotherapy, then we go with surgery phase. So it's not every patient needs that, but, uh, but uh, some does and, 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 some need it, you know, so, uh, to, uh, so it's always a joint decision and it's individualized decision, but a lot of times this is the right thing to do. Yeah. If I may add one point also, like when we do the surgery, we look at the pathological specimen, the surgical specimen itself, and we assess what we call RC, like residual cancer burden, RCB, and this will assess the effect of chemotherapy on the cancer cells. And again, we, we define if there is like a very good response or like moderate response or like bad response. 
then this may help also yeah to it define is a prognostic value prognostic value how and it is predictive look. values if we reach the complete response we may de-escalate therapy if we did not reach the complete response after doing whatever therapy we did before the surgery we may switch therapies and that could reach us in a better you know outcome and better uh, disease uh, control than people who never knew how they're going to respond therapy like the, the tumor was removed and then you just go with your best bet you know uh, with uh, with therapy options but you have a chance to switch therapies uh, you know smartly if you've did that kind of sequence well thank you both so much for coming on and talking to us about new adjuvant chemotherapy sounds like it's a pretty here at cleveland clinic Abu Dhabi, it's a multidisciplinary decision absolutely and those tumor yeah. boards sound like a, a vital place where we can where you all can look at the radio radiographic response and you mm -hmm. can talk about what's best for those patients. Yeah. Um, and I, know, I think it's so unique and neat that we have our breast specific pathologists and breast radiologists and breast surgeons and plastic surgeons and our medical oncologists all together in one room to discuss these patients. Um, so if you, if you know of anyone or you as a listener need um, any breast health services, feel free to reach out to us at clevelandclinicabudabi.ae um, or give us a call um, and there'll also be a link in the podcast notes that you can click on um, to, to connect with either Dr. Mathok or Dr. Jalad or any other of our colleagues here um, at the Breast Health uh, Program here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. That's correct. Um, so keep, stay tuned for the next episode of The Doc Is In. And thank you so much, Dr. Mathok and Dr. Jalad, for coming thank on you. today. Always my pleasure. Okay. Take care and stay healthy.